Hey guys, JK here. Uh, this is a little video tip I'm doing for uh, for the Asa. I've been working on this one uh, lately. It's an Asa Twin 6000. Looks like it's brand new. I picked it up from a locksmith on the way out here to California. Uh, it's got six normal pin stacks with uh, double spools in every chamber on top. The, uh, the, the, the key pins are normal. And uh, on the side here you've got five side pins. They're uh, they're serrated all the way around with uh, with one real gate on each, and then you have the uh, the sidebar with little shelves that that uh, that you lift the side pin real gates to match. So the bidding is actually the sidebars in these locks. Um, so far, I've managed to pick it with five of the normal stacks installed and the full sidebar, all five of those. So almost there. Uh, what we're using for tension is a uh, this Peterson, it looks like a flat five tensioner. Uh, you can do it from the uh, from the bottom down here, but if you do that, you're going to end up switching to the top when you get to the sidebar anyway. So you might as well just go for top tension. Uh, the first thing you'll note when this thing is being uh, bound up by the normal pin stacks, it doesn't have very much plug deviation at all, meaning that when you apply tension, that plug is not going anywhere. It might it might move a little bit, but that, that's inherent in all locks. It's never ever going to be just totally stiff, but it's pretty close. When that plug gets springy and it's able to get a lot bigger range of motion, we'll know it's time to move to the sidebar because all the normal pin stacks are set. Uh, using a Peterson short hook, I'm going in the back here. This uh, lock is only pinned with one normal stack and one side pin. So we're going to go all the way in the back and get to that pin, and we'll feel it binding, lift, and you heard it click into a false set. And we're going to let off tension and lift some more. And the reason you can tell that is that uh, when you vary the tension, the, the binding force in that pin, when you know, it feels like friction or stoppage, it, uh, it stays consistent. It doesn't change with your tensioning. So if the, if the if the false set is, I guess, wide enough, you could actually feel it wiggling in there. But with this, with the counter milling and the plug, that's uh, kind of difficult. So you just kind of have to vary your tension and try to figure out if you're in a false set or not by if by checking if the binding varies. So we're gonna let it off and lift some more. And that felt like a real set. But we're gonna do some double checking here. And it's up there pretty high, so there ain't too much further to go. So it kind of wiggling. Very intentional to do much. So good bet we're gonna learn the uh, the real set. Now because that was the only pin, it means that all the normal stacks are picked now. So you can see that effect I was talking about. All right, you see that plug? You see how it's got a large uh, freedom of rotation there, and most importantly, it's springy. That springiness is the uh, is the tension pressing the sidebar in toward the side pins and then when you let it off again it tries to spring back out and turns the plug with it so it kind of has like a you know, like a spring loaded padlock plug effect um, that's what you're looking for that tells you it's time to move on to the side pins what we're going to use for those is a Peterson half diamond this one's slightly modified I've, I kind of rounded almost sharpened the edges for other projects but uh, it works nicely here uh, we're going to be feeling along the pins to figure out which pins we're going to be looking at, you know, lifting and whatnot. So it's a good idea to, you know, have a, some frame of reference for what you're counting. Um, when you're feeling on the pin stacks, you're you're not looking for the side of the pin. That's not what you're feeling for as you're counting. What you want to do, you're going underneath the pin because it creates a little shelf there because the way, the way they sit against this uh, shell wall. And you're actually feeling for the... Uh, the chamber wall where the side pin sits, so it feels like a, you know, divots, not like lumps. If that makes sense. So we're gonna start way in the back and just kind of work out, lifting occasionally until we run into these things. Yep, there's the divot and there's the pin. 
So this thing is this last side pin is further toward the front than you would think for being the last one. Um, it's set. If it, it feels kind of stiff, and when you let off tension, you can get a little bit of wiggle action out of it. I find that you get a lot less when it's down toward the bottom for some reason. So what you have to do is get out of this false set. If you just lift up as hard as you can and let off tension, it, it's not even going to let go. You're actually going to trap the sidebar in place, so it's not even going to extend as long as you, you know, keep up your lifting force. So the way you do this is that you wiggle as you're letting off tension until it breaks free of that false set that it's in. And it just broke free. I lift it up just a little bit. I'm holding it up just above where it was false set. And then apply tension and continue lifting. And because that was the only side pin in the lock, it, uh, it opened a lot of the sidebar to retract. Um, the false sets in these side pins are really gnarly, so you, you, you do have to wiggle, otherwise you trap the sidebar. There's no, there's no lifting and watching, you know, counter rotation of the plug like like you do with normal security pins and regular pin stacks. You have to actually back off, let off a little bit of tension, try again, back off, let off a little bit of tension, try again, until you can break free of that false set. It's, uh, it's it's really difficult, but uh, I've found with, with practice to get a lot better at it. And that is the uh, the tips I have for this one. Uh, hopefully, it helps some of you guys out there that are just starting to play with this. Uh, thanks for watching.